called this press conference, I'm sorry, we've called this press conference to talk about the needless death of our union sister, Rose, Rose was a healthcare aide at the Summerwood Village Retirement Home in Sherwood Park, a home owned by All Seniors Care and managed by Nutri 2000. Rose became infected with COVID-19 at work in early December 2020, although we're still awaiting confirmation of specific details. After fighting the virus for five weeks, she succumbed to her illness at the University of Alberta Hospital this past Sunday, January 10th. We believe that this makes Rose the fourth Alberta healthcare worker to die from COVID-19, all of whom have passed away within the last two weeks. Rose um, was a committed healthcare worker devoted to her her residents that she cared for. She was also a tireless advocate for her co-workers and was the chief union steward for Lyuna Local 3000 at Summerwood Village. She leaves behind two adult children and many, many friends. Uh, I have three people today that would like to make statements regarding Rose. And first of all, I'd like to uh, invite Nenu Sw Swami, who is Rose's co-worker and dear friend uh, to be the first. Rose. Okay. Hi everyone, like um, if uh, I have to talk about Rose or if I will have something or the way of describing Rose, I will say that Rose was like a um, firecracker. She always made sure that her voice was heard and she was so colorful as a person. She was at the same time like funny, she has a way of uh, saying things. She was kind of goofy and sarcastic a little bit, but sweet as a pie, I will say at the same time. Not just because she's not here anymore, but that was Rose. That's really the way I would describe her, a strong person that makes sure that everyone was treated equally at work as a chief steward and as co-worker, just a co-worker at Summerwood uh, Village. I have known Rose for over 10 years and I have so much to say about Rose and as all the nurses at Summerwood, she will really be missed. She was a kind person, caring person, always there for everyone, especially the resident that was under her care. And sometimes she goes over even beyond that. She will go and help other resident that wasn't in her list just because they needed help and another nurse wasn't there or was busy or doesn't matter what. She always has been there for, for us at Summerwood and put her resident at first. She, she was a special person and she will still like, she impact a lot of life at Summerwood. Not just me, but all of us at Summerwood. We don't know if we will be able, like, I don't know how I can put it. The, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's really hard. But I will say that Rose has a strong personality and lovely person. It's sad that she passed and she left us because of this disease. Like she used, always she used to say, if I can say it loud today, this pandemic is real. It's real. She always advise every, everyone like saying, hey, this pandemic COVID-19, it's real. We need to protect ourselves. Sometimes she will say it and we will laugh. She's like, even though you don't care about yourself, care about other, protect yourself. This disease is really real. And we will say, yes, we will do that. We call her Rosie, like Samaru the Rose. I don't know what to say. I, I, I really, I knew Rose over 10 years, like I say. She make really a big difference, like in my life as a healthcare aide. 
she taught me a lot. She taught me a lot. And as a chief steward for me and me being her steward for the last seven years, I learned a lot, a lot, a lot. So I will say that personally, she has impacted my life in a way that I will never, never forget. I will never forget. She, she was loved by the resident at Summerwood and she's being missed a lot. She's being really missed. And if I have to say something, there's so many, so many things that I can say about Rose. But a few things that I will say that Rose will be missed about, it's her devotion and the work that she, she did. She, she really put her 100% on what she was doing as a healthcare aide. And she never put herself first. She always put herself behind an other first. I remember the day, the first day she went home because of that, I was home. She called me, she's like, hey buddy, if you come tomorrow and you don't see me at work, I'm home because of, I was exposed. And we talk, we talk, we laugh. And I say, okay, see you in two weeks then, but we will talk and we talk almost every day, three, four times a day. We talk, we talk and enter. She was like, I gotta go to the hospital. I'm not feeling good. She went, we talked two days when she was in the hospital and the third day she didn't answer me. That is the time I reached to the daughter and she told me everything that happened. So it's heartbreaking for me. I'm heartbroken. Like my heart is so broken now. I didn't lose only a coworker. I lost a sister, a friend. It's, it's hard, it's hard. She will really be missed. She will really be missed. She was one of, one of a kind in a million, I will say as a nurse and as a friend and as a mother she was a loving mother to her children. And it's sad. It's sad that she left us so soon. Thank you very much for that, Nanu. Um, I'd like to uh, now invite Ann Waller, uh, the president of Laguna Local 3000 to speak. Um, Laguna Local 3000 is of course the union that uh, Nanu and Rose uh, belong to and Rose was the chief union steward for us at Summerwood Village and a proud member. Go ahead, Ann. I'm the president of Leuna Local 3000. I've known Rose since 2009 when she became a member. She has been involved in our union since day one. I've spent a lot of time with Rose and came to know her quite well and came to enjoy the time that we spent together. So I knew that she was ill. And on Sunday, when I got the news that she had passed, it was the day that I had been dreading since the pandemic was declared last March. And I knew that we would lose members. And I was sad about that. But this is a person that was part of our Leuna family. This is a person I knew well, and it was a friend. It was somebody that I had shared many laughs with and many meals with, and somebody that we worked together. I worked together with to help the workers at Summerwood Village, and not only at Summerwood Village, at the other facilities that we represent in Edmonton because Rose was a leader. And she was prepared to help anyone, whether it be at Summerwood, 
or anywhere else. So I was sad, but I was also angry because Rose should not have died. Her life was cut short because she went to work. She went to work to care for other people. And her life was cut short because she was doing important work that she loved. And I was angry. I was angry because she is not gonna get to see either one of her children marry. She's not gonna experience the joy or the excitement of welcoming her future grandchildren. Rose should have been planning for her future and a future where she would be able to enjoy everything that she had worked so hard for over the last 45 years caring for other people. So I was angry. Healthcare workers are going to continue to die if, if the decision makers in Alberta, and I'm squarely gonna put this on Jason Kenney and Tyler Shandro, do not put laws in place that allow healthcare workers that need to isolate to stay home and be paid. As long as healthcare workers continue to have to make the untenable decision of either going to work and getting paid when they're exposed or staying home and not being able to put food on their table or pay or pay their rent, healthcare workers will continue to die. There's no excuse in the second wave of this pandemic that those safety nets are not in place. And that is squarely on the Premier of Alberta and the Minister of Health who have not put those laws in place. And until there are protections in place for healthcare workers to be able to isolate when they need to isolate, they will continue to be exposed and they will continue to die. This needs to end. Enough is enough. Healthcare workers are not a disposable commodity. We have to protect them. They're not just a number. As the death tolls continue to rise, they're not just a number. Rose was not a number. She was my friend. And I'm mad that she died. And we have to make sure and do whatever we can to drive change so that healthcare workers are protected and we don't continue to lose them. Rose was a wonderful person. And I'm sad that she's gone, but I'm angry. And we will make sure that we don't forget her. Thank you for that, Anne. Um, I'd like to now ask Gil McGowan, the president of the Alberta Federation of Labor to say a few words, Gil. Lyuna is part of our broader union family uh, here in Alberta. And Rose was one of our union sisters. She was a mother, a friend, a healthcare worker. And as we've heard, she was also a union activist and a shop steward. So I'm here today on behalf of all of Rose's sisters and brothers in the Alberta labor movement to celebrate her life and to mourn her loss. As Alberta union activists, our first concern is for Rose, her family, her friends and her coworkers. From our perspective, Rose is a frontline hero who is, is gone far too soon. But our sadness for Rose turns to anger. When we think of the role that the provincial government played in her death. The Kenny government failed Rose and other healthcare workers like her by failing to properly implement a single site policy for continuing care facilities, by failing to enact paid sick leave laws and other policies that would have allowed workers to stay home when they need to isolate, and by failing to reduce the growth and the community spread of COVID, making it much, much more difficult to keep residents and staff in continuing care facilities like Summerwood safe. The government's approach of doing as little as possible, as late as possible, was a disaster for Rose 
and it has been and it's been a disaster for our whole province. We think it is no ex exaggeration to say that Premier Kenny and Health Minister Shandro have blood on their hands. How bad have things been in seniors facilities around Alberta? Well, All Seniors Care, the company that owns Summerwood Village where Rose worked, they operate eight facilities in Alberta, six in Edmonton and region and two in Calgary. All but one of those facilities have had outbreaks, sometimes multiple outbreaks, and in some cases, very large outbreaks. So sadly, this is not unusual for the sector. Rose was the four, fourth healthcare worker to die of COVID in the last week and a half, and she was one of 139 Albertans who died from the virus in this last week alone, making it the most deadly week in Alberta since the pandemic began. We can't bring Rose back, but we can take action to limit future deaths. That's why, as of today, and in Rose's memory, the Alberta Federation of Labour and our affiliated unions will be ramping up our efforts to demand isolation pay from the provincial government for all workers who have to isolate because of COVID. And in the next session of the legislature, we will be demanding that the government pass a law mandating 10 days of paid sick leave for all Albertans. We have said goodbye to far too many of our friends and colleagues who have died as a result of workplace exposure to COVID. And we know that more will die in the coming weeks. These deaths are doubly tragic because many of them could have been and should have been avoided if workers simply could afford to stay home when they needed to. Appeals to personal responsibility are empty and hollow and ineffective when low income workers have to choose between following health guidelines and paying their rent or putting food on their tables. The bottom line for us is that if the Kenny government is serious about stopping the spread of COVID, then they need to get serious about isolation pay and paid sick leave. To date, they have not been serious about either of those things. That needs to change. So in Rose's memory, and for the sake of all Albertans, Let's make sure that it does. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, Gil. Uh, before we go to questions, folks, um, Anne would like to read a brief part of what Rose's daughter, uh, Kelsey, wrote in tribute to her. Anne, do you want to take that? Thank you, Todd. Yes, I will. I'm going to read uh, directly from uh, what Kelsey wrote. This virus does not discriminate. It takes from families, it cuts life short. It will leave me with a hole in my heart the rest of my life. My mom was an amazing woman and mother. She had a humor like no other. She was beyond caring. She was the most selfless person. So selfless, she continued to work through this pandemic, even though she was compromised herself. She followed the mask mandate, stayed six feet apart, wore a face shield, and still managed to catch COVID-19 at work. She lost her life caring for others, always putting others before herself. For over 45 years, she has cared for many people and ended up losing her life for only wanting to help. My mom is a healthcare hero and she will never be forgotten. I will make sure of that. If my mom's story can make a change or change someone's opinion about COVID-19, that's a positive. Thanks very much for that, and, and uh, thank you, Kelsey, 